The Peak Tram in Hong Kong opened in 1888. It's Asia's first funicular railway. Today, I'm checking out the latest incarnation of this icon of the city, which was reopened this year after 14 months of renovation. With its skylight ceilings and increased capacity, the revamped Peak Tram, now in its sixth generation, is a testament to the iterative nature of urban infrastructure, building better new models based on feedback from older ones. And that's the approach one researcher in Singapore is taking as she imagines the next iteration of transport. Crowd-pleasing robots, brand new electric trucks, and the model trains of the future. At the Singapore International Transport Congress and Exhibition, a menagerie of mobility. The SITC conference was quite exciting. It's so nice to see the transport industry and the partners all coming together again, you know, after the pandemic to showcase the latest work that everyone's been doing over the past few years. At the Singapore University of Technology and Design, Associate Professor Lynette Chia leads a research group exploring sustainable urban mobility. A uh, big part of what we do is focused on transportation. So how do we move goods and people around the city better, more efficiently and, and uh, more cleanly? What we do is modeling and simulating and then trying to evaluate the overall impact and find ways to reduce that impact. Whether it's modeling freight transport or tracking the carbon emissions from e-commerce deliveries, Chia says her work as a researcher centers around data collection in order to improve the transport ecosystem. In Singapore, EV charging stations coexist with traditional shop houses. And the ever-expanding Mass Rapid Transit System, or MRT, allows for greater connectivity with more than 130 stations. Chia says that the Southeast Asian city-state is a case study in building a smart city with its myriad mobility offerings. I think Singapore is a smart city, given all the data that we collect and the information we therefore derive from that data, and to use that to help the urban activities that we're all involved in. So data is one part of the picture, using it's another one, and then I think the population is also generally quite tech savvy, so very receptive to new technologies, innovations, and um, trying them out. Technology like the Auto Rider, a fully electric autonomous shuttle which can seat 11 and travels at a regulated speed of 9 kilometers per hour through Singapore's Jurong Lake Gardens. We found uh, a lot of people felt the vehicles are very safe to travel in. So there's very high acceptance of such technologies as a future transportation. Alan Quek is the director and general manager of Willers, a Japanese transportation solution company that has been in Singapore since 2018. We want to provide a sustainable and inclusive mobility. At the same time, with all this increase in mobility, it helps to revitalize the towns and making the towns more vibrant and greater, creating more connectivity and interactivity among people. Or there's Camelo, a robot developed by Singaporean firm Otsa and designed for last mile delivery. Otsa's CEO, Ling Ting Ming, says his robots can handle labor intensive and mundane jobs while lowering emissions and reducing traffic. Mobility is always centric to all these service bots because if they are not intelligent enough to know where to go or how to navigate an obstacle, be it a dynamic or static obstacle, then it kind of poses a safety issues in the public domain space. So with the technologies advancement as well as the situation post-COVID, it's a perfect storm. We're seeing everything is coming together. Ling says Otsa currently has more than 800 robots deployed worldwide, like the ORX, a disinfection bot built in just 60 days during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Or the Transcar, an automated guided vehicle that can transport heavy objects in a healthcare setting. Attention, automatic transport. There's a lot of changes in the last two years. And that leads to the robot being more pervasive in our living environment. Technology has also brought forth that possibility because of autonomous mobility. 
For Lynette Chia, building a smart city is about more than embracing the latest technologies. It's about the end user. I think a smart city must always be reminded to remain human-centric because ultimately it's not so much about the technology itself, but how we use the technology towards certain goals. I think sometimes there's a lot of fascination with new innovations. It's really key to remember the human using the technology so that it works for us.